starving. Be gone! Come on, man, I'm starving. Negative. You shall find no sustenance beneath my cranial dome. <laughs> Wait, I did not intend to imply any deficit of brain matter or intelligence. I possess both in ample supply. Well, then let me have some. I haven't eaten in forever. Your process of decomposition will continue irregardless of your continued consumption of brain matter. Oh, snap. It is not the first time you have invaded my personal space sphere, but it shall be the last. Under no circumstances are you to cross this boundary to my designated side, and I shall do you the same courtesy. And if I do? Any intrusion shall be compensated for by the full fury bequeathed to me by the overlords of Cheem, who have powers terrible and unimaginable, and have deemed me worthy also to control said powers. Oh, fine. 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 Good. But cross over to my side, and I'll eat your brains. Given the unlikelihood that I will violate our agreement, your terms are more than acceptable. Our transmission. We are broadcasting dead air. Blast by the Flens Lord of Kraskis. I can do nothing from here. Robbie, the lever on the control board. Pull the lever. Hmm? Pull the lever marked transmit. That one. There. Quickly. Oh no, I can't pull the lever. I'm just too weak. It must be all the decaying. Oh, infernal dug ups. I shall assist you. Ah, uh -uh, the line. You think to foil me with this weak perimeter? Within my chest beats a beast of a thousand suns. I shall make quick work of your defenses. No. I'm ignoring you. I'm ignoring you. Ignor go. La 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 la. I'm ignoring you. Furry here. So we're having a meeting today and I get to make my first ever pitch for a new show. This is great. I've got a whole notebook full of show ideas from back when I was in high school. Yeah. Well, okay. I guess I have three ideas actually, but uh, then it looks like I doodled several pages and the rest are blank, but still three ideas is pretty good, huh? Yeah. Like, uh, like this one. Um, well, actually it looks like I used up most of the page on that one, making up the logo and the one sheet but uh, kind of light on details. Okay, um, let's see, let's see. Oh, oh, hey, this one, this one's good. Um, it's about, uh, um, okay, well, this one just sucks, okay? But, uh, oh, I was pretty violent back then. Oh, kind of a perv, too. But uh, let's see, uh, let's see, this one was really awesome, but uh, Kevin Smith totally stole my idea about three years before I had it. Um, okay. No ideas. That's cool. I can think on my feet. Yeah. Firma man, about that screenplay you wrote. Uh-oh. Here it comes. What's wrong with it? Not enough conflict? Oh, no. Plenty of conflict. Uh, character struggle? Well, there's some struggling going on, all right. Well, it can't be the emotional elements. I was all over that when I was writing. <laughs> yeah, you had my character crying quite a bit. Wait a minute. You're not in the script. <laughs> oh, I'm not, eh? Well, oh, I see why you're confused. You know, I took some traits for the main character from you, a few from Dwayne, a little Archie, and a bunch from the bullies that I dealt with in grade school. It's all part of the writer's process. <clears throat> Interior warehouse, night. Rat Dink is strapped spread eagle on a pool table. A giant industrial laser hangs overhead. Moldfinger approaches the pool table. Rat Dink. Very impressive laser, Moldfinger. Moldfinger. Yes, but it's broken, so I'll have to do it the hard way. <laughs> Moldfinger reaches for his belt and begins to unbuckle it. 
Rat Dink, do you expect me to scream, Mole Finger? <laughs> Mole Finger, no, Mr. Dink, I expect you to cry. <laughs> <clears throat> and, and then? Well, then Rat Dink gets reamed like a muskmelon for 16 and a half pages. Um, so, uh, less reaming? Yes! How much less? How about no reaming? 16 pages of no reaming! Uh, okay. Um, good notes. I'll, I'll get right on that rewrite. Oh, Moldfinger, I just got it. <laughs> yeah. So then Chester wants to shamble by the local AA meeting for a bite, right? Anyway, long story short... Too late. By the end of the night, we were completely hammered. I mean, just wasted. So Chester passes out in a puddle of his own brain puke, right? And then his instincts kick in, and he starts eating it! Very humorous. It conforms perfectly to the behavior I have come to expect from your people. Hey, come on, man. Why do you gotta be so racist? I am not a racist. Many of my best friends are dead. Yeah, but have any of them ever risen from the dead? None would be so tacky. See? Racist. I have no specific animus for your kind. I merely voice supportable generalities. Name one. One. Due to their limited motor skills, the undead are slow. Two. The undead smell. Three, the undead usurp gainful employment that would otherwise be reserved for higher life forms. Four, you're racist. That statement fails given the context of my argument. Five, you're a grammar Nazi. Six, brains. I like brains. So what? Brains are good for you. They're full of vitamins. Sue me because I eat healthy. As it happens, human brains and the thought waves contained therein are a delicacy of my people as well. So I will not fault you for that. You like brains? Indeed. You know, I brought a pretty big lunch. You want halvesies? This is an acceptable agreement. Cool. I shall, however, require my own utensils. That is so racist! Hey, welcome back to Devil's Advocate, the show that challenges your thoughts and informs your senses. We used to be a call-in show, but for some reason, we no longer have access to a working phone line. Yeah, to explain this disservice to you, the viewers, we have brought in a special guest, the guy we caught stealing the phone, Robbie. Hey, welcome, Robbie. Oh, what happened? What happened indeed? What happened, VB? Well, I found Robbie stealing our phone. Oh, and then I hit him upside the head with a pipe and threw him in our dungeon. <laughs> so, Robbie, what do you have to say for yourself? Look, I don't know what you guys are getting upset about. It was a prop phone. It wasn't even plugged in. How are people supposed to know we're a call-in show without a prop phone? A call-in show without a prop phone? Are you trying to make us look unprofessional? Next thing you know, you'll be taking away our rubber plant. What kind of experts don't have a rubber plant? Actually, it's a ficus. What? Don't touch our expert ficus. I wasn't going near your ficus. Look, Furry told me to take the phone. Not the teeth. Okay. While most people worry about the flashier forms of death, the truth is, statistically speaking, you're more likely to die due to your own body crapping out on you. And most of that is due to how terribly you treat your bodies. Oh, also you're statistically likely to die alone and unmourned. Seriously, I need to jog off the calories every time I drink one of you. My children, welcome another Babushka Buzz. Today the show is featured, where are they now? Perhaps you recognize the new face at Transylvania Television from movie of the 1950s. Please welcome guests goes on the Cosmic Defender! Uh, I must make immediate correction to your introduction. That's Cosmic Destroyer. I destroy. Not Defender? Certainly not. So, tell us more about this, uh, destroying business. I, Gorzon the Cosmic Destroyer of Worlds, have come to erase your minds, enslave your populace, and lay claim to the planet Earth by the power of the Galactic Control Body. Prepare to face oblivion! People of your puny world may feel free to panic and retreat in terror now. So, uh, uh... How's that working out for you? Very soon, the plan will coalesce, and this sphere will tremble at the power of Gorzon! Um, how long ago did you arrive here and begin destroying? 
Uh, the 1950s, wasn't it? There have admittedly been some setbacks. Upon my arrival, I was temporarily distracted by a highly successful and popular film career. Oh, and some commercial work. Uh oh, and that off-Broadway uh, revival of uh, South Pacific. So you've started to prepare to start then? Almost. But when I apply my considerable alien will and superior intellect, I am nigh unstoppable. For example, beyond the Tony nomination for my portrayal of the stage manager in Our Town is my meteoric rise among the ranks here, from janitorial staff to daytime segment director in a mere 14.97 months. So the people of the Earth are doomed? Yes. And if we wanted to plan around this doom, it would be starting... Uh... Oh, any minute now. Any minute now. Unless they extend my run of Fiddler on the Roof at the Transylvania Family Players Community Theater. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm playing Tevye. Tickets available at the box office. Well, there you have it. The end of the world brought to you by Gorzon the Cosmic Defender. Destroyer. Tune in next time when we will be cooking with the ghost of Vincent Price. Sunday matinee tickets half off. See, that's it. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is so sick. I've done it. It's hot. Yeah. Hey, Batfink, I just finished sorting your Man From Uncle plate collection. I, uh, hey, what are you guys looking at? This? Oh, I just bought an illustrated copy of the most awesome book ever. We bought it. Wait. Sure, we. Wait, you two bought a book together? Well, VB stood there while I paid for it. So, it's porn. Aw, oh, check it, man. It's an instruction manual. Sex don't enter into it. Well, it does on page 37. It's, uh, Kama Slatra. Ancient text of Oriental monsters. Pop-up edition. No, there is no such thing. Oh yeah? Gamera, the snapping turtle. While crouching behind your victim in a marsh, distract them with a cat or raccoon, then bite their head off. <gasps> Sweet! I know. Uh, here's my favorite. Whoa. Whoa. There, there is no way you can do that without tentacles. I mean, well, even if you had them, you, I'm sure physics would be against you. Well, that's why it's called Kuthahulu, bringer of madness. Oh, look, a pull tab. <laughs> oh, 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 a piece of my soul fell out. Oh, oh. Literature is awesome. Oh, look at my book. We are now joined by Furry J. Ackermonster, resident yeti, and the brains behind the phone heist. Furry, why'd you do it? Somebody hit me in the head with a golf club. Lead pipe, answer the question. Look, I was simply instructed to move one piece of castle equipment from one place to another. See, not guilty. Can I get out of here now? No. no. You expect us to believe that someone else concocted this brilliant scheme to make us look like asses on our own show? Yes. Hello, and welcome to Vacuuming Creosote from Laminate with Dwayne. I'm Dwayne. Hello. <laughs> Today's letter comes from, uh, I'm not sure, doesn't appear to be a dress. Maybe it says more inside. <clears throat> oh, how about that? A cellie phone. <gasps> this is Dwayne. Hello. Dwayne, listen to me very carefully. This is Neo. Oh, Neo who? What? Oh, hello, Neo what? I'm Dwayne. Hello. Right, so there are agents in the castle right now. Oh, no, Asians. No, not Asians, okay? Agents. Do they know Kung Fu? Yes. Are you sure they're not Asian? Uh, fine, yes, they're Asian. Listen, they're very organized. They know exactly where you are. They're probably tracing this call, so we have to be brief. I'm wearing boxer briefs, is that okay? Yeah, that'll be fine. You just need to move fast. What are you wearing? Uh, th that's not important right now. Come on, baby, you can't leave me hanging like that. Papa's got knees. Fine, black leather. Now You're a dirty to... little bitch, aren't you? You know what? Screw this. You can fight off the agents on your own. And send. <sighs> this is Dwayne. Hello. Did you just send me a picture message? You lucky Neo Geo? Look, I don't have a plan for messaging, okay? That's like 20 cents per message. If you want to talk, just call me. So you do want to talk then? Uh, I miss your touch. Mm. Okay, it's hour five, and we're narrowing down our search and interrogation. We are joined now by the kingpin of Operation 
discredit the two most awesome guys in the castle by ruining their call-in show by taking away their main visual prop that allows the audience to know that this is indeed a call-in show, AKA Operation Magic Snatch. Magic Snatch. So, Mr. Diabolical Kingpin, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, I'm completely squished in here. I think my lung collapsed. Nobody move. Nobody move. I think a contact fell out. Oh, no, it's just my eye. Oh, I think I felt it roll into my pocket. No, that was me. I removed my olfactory unit. It smells like something died in here. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Yes, I take offense to that. Oh, okay, okay, guys, okay, guys. Uh, tensions are getting a little heated. Let's not try and fight. There's no room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So says the orange load himself. <laughs> hey, what'd you say about me, dug up? Oh, oh, oh no, you're just oh. Well, that's what you get for stealing our phone. But you asked me to put a phone in your room. Ooh, uh, look at the time. Join us next time when we lock up the castle crew for trashing our rubber plant. Yeah. It's a ficus. Oh. He's peeing on it now, isn't he? Yeah. It is a nightly monster tradition before climbing into their crypts to slumber to tell one tale of horror to set the shivers on edge. Join the cast now for scary stories of fearful terror. So that's when FDR uttered with his dying breath, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. That is the lamest scary story I've ever heard. What? No, it's totally scary. First of all, that quote is uplifting. Yeah, it was a beacon of hope during the Great Recession. Inception. Depression. See, but that's where you're wrong. He said it once during getting inundated. Inebriated. Initiated. Right. And a second time when he crumpled to the ground in a puddle of his own blood and intestines. <laughs> Clutching the sword of a thousand sorrows. And the cape of quickness. Oh, well, I thought they were shoes of swiftness. Shoes, cape, what's the difference? Well, I'm not called a punce when I wear a pair of shoes. Duh, it was a cloak, all right. I would totally wear a cloak. But still, the only thing to fear is fear itself is still a sucky ending. <laughs> That's because you don't know demonic context. Fear is a chick. Yeah, a serious demoness. We're talking archduchess with thousands of razor-sharp teeth, even some in her mouth. Yeah. And the claws like 44 tigers. 792 claws? But no, that's like the length of the claws. Well, it's like 12 meters. Whatever. And if you don't fear fear, you're visited by her. And she, like, asks if she can sleep on your couch. Oh, okay, okay. But it doesn't stop there. Because one night, you might accidentally kiss her, right? And then she'll get it into her head that you two are an item. And she'll never leave! Oh, oh, oh what oh. would the neighbors say? Oh. Yeah, and she'll expect you to share your feelings, but will be easily offended by anything negative you say. Oh. 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 Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Is she hot? She was a looker in high school, but that's all faded. And now all that remains is her entitled attitude! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, Oh, no, not after last time. Ah, Gorzon, we need to have a little chat. Yes, my earthly commander. I've gotten a complaint about you from one of the staff. You. Me. Is this about my use of the term dug-ups in relation to my differently animated co-workers? I've explained ad nauseum by a completely supportable position concerning the undead and their proper place in the galactic order. No, no, no. I'm afraid it hinges on the fact that you lied on your resume. Gorzon the Cosmic Destroyer does not engage in untruth. My people are practitioners of universal factology. Tology, tology. It seems, contrary to your resume, that you are not a marauding conqueror from the Questron Nebula, but in fact, a B-grade actor in a dodgy ape costume. A falsehood devised by your Planetary Defense League to discredit me. The jig is up. And there's no such thing as a Planetary Defense League. The, then who dares besmirch the name of Gorzon? You. Me. See, I was snooping through your footlocker when I found this vintage Hollywood magazine. Seems that on page 12, there are production stills of you with your head off. That, uh, a uh, clever ruse. Using televideo projection, I disguised myself as human to infiltrate Earth defenses. I see. And did you also project a zipper on your back? Matt Fink? 
Gotcha, boss. Wait, no. Stop. Don't touch me. Hey, what? Oh. Shall I proceed with the termination paperwork, sir? Oh, don't be silly. Consider this a sideways promotion. Fat Fink haul his carcass to the discount mad lab. I want him roboticized by the late shift. What about the space monkey suit? Oh, keep it on. It tickles me. on Transylvania Television. We've just returned from the cinema. What'd you see? I saw our future. Hey, me. I'm you from the future. Uh, I deserve a pudding. They gave me some drugs for tissue rejection. Not on the thingy. What happens when you 3D a 3D movie? Did you bite this thing for us and give it the undead plague? You guys think I'm a zombie? <laughs>